What? What excites you about Cage Casey? You were mentioning him last year when he was like a true freshman, which I was like, no one mentions true freshman offensive lineman. Like, what do you like so much about that guy? He is super athletic, okay. as well. He's got great feet. He's put on a bunch of great weight. He's kind of one of those product of COVID recruiting where he missed out at the end of his oh. junior year and kind of, you could just tell like, oh man, this guy hasn't, you know, he's missing a year of development. If we can get him here and develop him, he's going to be a big time player. And that's kind of what has happened is we were able to fortunately project him and get him here and get him in with a great strength staff and a great nutritionist. And he's been able to get a lot stronger and a lot bigger. And now he's he's um, ready to come in and compete. The the other dude there, um, Ethan Card, I, I think will Farrar had a uh, an assist on the recruiting there. Yeah. Um, but the guy, I mean, just his you know stats are, uh, sorry, his body, his height, weight, everything is just jumps off the page. But what does he bring as an offensive lineman? And then you know having starts in the Big Twelve like that experience, how much can that help him? He's got the perfect blend of he's played enough so he knows what it is to play in a big time game. Yeah. But hasn't played so much where he's got all these bad habits and he's not going to be one of those guys, well, no, this is how I did it before, so this is how I'm going to do it. Like, he's super receptive of what, what's the first step you want me to take and where's my landmark. Okay. And so he has that, but he's also been in big, big environments. So he's the perfect person to come in and compete for that left tackle spot because he has that, that blend of both those traits. Uh, has Mason Randolph played center before? No. Okay. Nope. And he's going to try and oh, yeah. play center. Oh, yeah. And if you look at it, again, that's um, – you're just – at college, you don't recruit a lot of high school centers. If yeah. you just go to any high school game and you see their center, normally that guy is, you know, not big enough to play college football. So yeah. that's often the case where you're converting a guard or a tackle okay. to, come, to come play center. So And Mason has all of the, the attributes off the field. He's a student of the game. Yeah. He loves the craft. Yeah. Super high football intelligence is always watching film so that part of it is he's he's off the charts i i'm transitioning to center from you what what are the first couple of things you're trying to teach you gotta be able to snap the ball like <laughs> we don't have a play okay. it sounds simple it sounds like jv football but like, yeah it's called football and, and you can't <laughs> snap it so like you have to have that quarterback center exchange so it's one of those things where sometimes you get excited and start getting the scheme and blitz adjustments yeah. it's like you can't skip steps yeah you can't skip steps and you know, we've had issues with this quarterback center exchange in the past so we got to do a really really good job of making sure we're yeah. doing little little things extremely well i think there was a point last year where everyone's kind of looking around and being like and this offensive line is struggling like what is happening and now you look at it and it's like you know i i just look at it and i'm like Damn, i have a lot of confidence in who they've got at offensive line Dooley and Curran, Beresford, like you go into the season, like kind of with a little bit of a smile on your face, like, all right, we, we've got some dudes, like we can do stuff here. Well, I'm always excited to start football, like this time yeah. of year, like this grass and being back <laughs> with the guys. And so I'm always excited about that part. I'm also always like terrified of this. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. We're going to play real football here yeah. against an opponent coming up. So it's kind of allowing that to kind of set, set our purpose as a, as a unit and kind of set our urgency in, in, early in install one like we're not like we're not skipping steps and doing all those little things right because those are going to show up in yeah. big time and environments that's when you want to make sure the quarterback center exchange is, is perfect yeah so it's it's fine that that balance and, and and blend of having some urgency but also going okay, okay this is the deepest the room has been yeah so that is a testament to our training staff yeah. our strength staff they've done a great job of getting the guys ready to come into fall camp and compete the uh so is there is it a competition at left tackle right now oh, between yeah. Ethan yep. and Cage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those guys will be battling for that for that yeah. spot. Uh, obviously, you've you figured it out over the last two years. Whoever you roll out there, game one. Not going to be the same. Not going to be the same, nope. maybe ever. Yeah. Um, is that something when you've got a bunch of young guys and, you know, guys like Roger and stuff have seen it. Heck, he played against, like, is it UTEP, New Mexico? Yeah, UTEP. Um, where you're like, hey, guys, you might not be, you know, slotted here right now, but, like, you will play. Like something is going to happen, and is that something you just have to just stress over and over again? Yes. Yeah, because like you ha you have to have a starting group. Like we have to, when we start practice, day yeah. one, there has to be five offensive linemen <laughs> yeah. for that very first rep that go out in the field. Yeah. Like yeah. regardless of what you do. So, and it's just making sure those guys know and being open with their communication. Like this is a competition. We're trying to figure out, you know, who's going to play against week one, and then we're trying to also okay this guy may be more ready week one but we think by week six yeah. this guy might be able to overtake him so it's being able to kind of see it from both from both perspectives and that's where yeah. coach Alves is good coach Hanlon is good yeah you know, sometimes me I'm like so close I'm you know I'm in yeah. it with those guys every day it's good to have outside perspective where those guys are saying like okay 
we see that these guys are starting right now, but let's yeah. make sure we're still developing these these three guys because they're going to help us. I think offensive linemen get blamed for a lot of stuff that isn't their fault um, sometimes. Too much credit, too much blame. Too much credit, too you much blame. You think they get too much credit? Oh, yeah, sometimes, yeah. You want no credit. You want no one to ever talk exactly. about it. Like referees. If no yes. one's talking about it, you did oh, yeah. a hell of a job. Oh, yeah. Because look at like we want to be explosive on offense. That's our goal. Like, how do we yeah. be explosive on offense? Simple. Get the receivers the ball. Yeah. Because we have d dynamic guys. So we have to hold on to protection long enough. Because if our protection will hold up, yeah. those guys will always get open. Same yeah. thing, we have dynamic backs. If we can give those guys just enough daylight, yeah. they will be explosive. But on that, you've got a guy in Nate Potter who's played offensive line. You've got a guy in Jimmy Montgomery who has coached on the offensive line. As the offensive line coach, does it help that the people around you know what the heck they're doing? Hopefully, one hundred percent. It's one of those things too. Is like, how do you see the game? Yeah. If you have all former quarterbacks on the coaching <laughs> staff, they're going to see it a specific way. Yeah. So it's good to have a blend, and then to have some people that directly related to the offense line, and that's where Coach Potter is amazing because he's played yeah. it at an extremely high level. But he's also coaching the tight end, so he's concerned about everything. Yeah. He's concerned about the formations, the shifts, the pass game. Yeah. So he's he's an awesome guy to work with because he knows and understands the issue of offensive line play, but he's also seen the kind of global the global perspective. Yeah. Sweet.